people who suffered through Malcolm Butler and the Super Bowl benching and still not having an answer to that is really frustrating. But you do wonder whether it's crumbling behind the scenes here and what happens if you lose another game, fall to two and eight heading into that bye week. I I don't know I don't know what kind of performance you're getting from the from those guys in those remaining games anymore. I think it's one, Mac, two, three, one, two, three Cancun already with this team. Mac was asked if it's hard to like keep confidence in the system pretty much during the press post game. And he was like, Yeah, but it's what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was that was pretty usually he skates those questions and maybe he meant it a different way, but even still, like Matthew Slater said last week after the Dolphins game, like, yeah, it's going to be tough to like kind of maintain buy-in and stuff like that. And these are things that they were denying earlier in the season. So it's not that it's not that these are just slipping out. Like these are this is different from what they've been saying when they you could tell they did have faith because it was kind of silly after three games to think that they were good. Now, I wouldn't say silly because at the time it was pretty fair uh, considering it was the repeat of a lot of things we'd seen earlier from the offense. But they're start the cracks are already starting to show where players are acknowledging, yeah, this is tough. And we're not even at the bye week yet. So, yeah. Uh, as, as far as Mac is concerned, I found some of his post-game commentary interesting. Um, uh, just the way that he was answering uh, certain questions. I don't think he's doing himself himself any favors here. I'll get into that in a minute. want to tell you real quick about FanDuel. FanDuel is the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So Taylor, Mac Jones, couple of comments. I felt were you in on his entire press conference? Um, I was, yeah. General vibe, I felt like there was a lot of that's a good question. I don't know. That's a good point that you made. Uh, excellent question there. And to me, that's basically saying like what you said is right, but I don't want to say it, so I'm going to let you say it and some of it was about personnel. Um, changing personnel is that tough? That's a good question. You know, what about this? You make an excellent point. He did kind of a lot of those things, which is, you know, thinly veiled sort of like, yep, I'm agreeing with you, but I'm not going to say it um, sort of stuff. And I, I don't know who watches it or who sees it. I can't imagine that plays super well, you know, because underneath it all, he's like, but no excuses and I have to do better and blah, 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 and this and that. But, you know, Mac feels it. You know, Mac feels he's been done dirty by Bill the last two years and everything and with everything around it. And I don't know that that's something that can ever be fixed. Um, and I, I don't think it will be fixed. I think the if one, if one is back, the other certainly is not. And realistically it would be, it wouldn't be surprising if both aren't here next year, but I think this marriage is over. I agree. Like this is one where I'm, I, I've, I've said a lot of what I wanted to say about this, but I mean, yeah, I, I think we've gotten to the point where it, uh, I just – there's so many holes on this team that I don't even think of Mac is your biggest problem. But it, whether it is him or Bill or both or one or the other, like something's got to change because there's so many things that Bill does well and brings to the organization. But it's also – it's gotten to the point where even giving that caveat seems like I'm giving him an easy way out for what has just been objectively a horrendous season. And he always says that all of that goes to me. And when we do poorly, it's all on me. Well, Bill, yeah, and you're the general manager. So even if you're not super involved in personnel during the season because you're super duper busy – you know, these things do follow you. So, and we've already said, you can't really put all this on Mac. Like he's doing his best, but his best isn't good enough. But then when he is doing his best, people are letting him down. It's just a cacophony of bad. And I think he just doesn't want to lie to our faces. Like Bill tends to, and you know, act like our questions aren't valid when they absolutely are. And I think as long as they're, you know, phrased the right way, I think all of the players are usually pretty honest about, yeah, we're not doing enough. Like Dietrich Wise also kind of turned the corner of earlier yeah. in the year being like, yeah, no, like we're a good team. He, I remember him specifically saying so, we are a good team. Today he said we're beating ourselves. I think this was the first time I've heard him outright say that like, yeah, yeah there's no real positive. We're just – I think players and coaches are different in this regard, Taylor. And again, as a guy who's done this my entire life in terms of like, you know, media on the scene, producing, looking for sound bites, trying to read into what's being said, you know, feeling entitled to some level of honesty and or accountability from the people that we talk to on a regular basis. I've finally kind of settled in on this. I think players 
sometimes they don't want to talk to you. Like, I think it's different. The players are out there playing, and sometimes when you ask them why they did something, their blood is up after the game. They're all jacked up, they, and they, they may feel accountable, but they don't necessarily want to tell you. They don't want to give it up, okay? Is it better when they do? Sure. Do we feel better about it? Sure. Do we treat them a little bit softer and nicer when they are accountable? Sure. So Juju is going to get a free pass for his drop this week. Because he because he owned up to it. And Parker, there was a witch hunt for a friggin', you know, seven days trying to, to admit that you messed up. And I don't care as much about that. If inside the <laughs> locker room they're doing it to each other, that's fine. Sometimes they just don't want to give it up to us because they're just like, ah, oh, man, I just I, I know what you want out of me. I just don't feel like giving it to you right now. And so yeah. and that's an emotional reaction sometimes after the game. Parker, of course, had three, four days after the fact to have looked back on it and said, like, yeah, I got to catch that ball. He didn't. Doesn't matter leave that alone. The coach is different. The coach to me, and this is what, what, it, what it is with all of them. They're much smarter than we are. The players are much smarter than we are. They see things and know things we'll never be able to comprehend. And that's even including someone like you who is as good as anybody in the business at understanding what they actually see on the field. The majority of people asking questions don't understand nearly close to the same level as these guys. So Bill doesn't feel that you Whoever you are asking the question is entitled to an answer because you don't understand or see what he sees. But from the media perspective, it's like, but we're asking you, we're, we're, what's the point of journalism? It's sports. This isn't, we're not talking it. Look, we're not talking to city hall or talking to somebody, you know, about major issues that affect people. This is sports and it's sports fans who just want their teams to win. But it still is about holding power to account, and you're trying to ask the person making all the decisions why they made the decision that resulted in blank, and you have him say, whatever, like, I don't care. So when you're not getting it from the coach, it's a little bit tougher because you're basically saying, like, you're accountable for all of this. Why aren't you telling us why you're making the choices that you're making and why you did this and why didn't you play this person? And when they don't tell you, then it gets really, really frustrating because you're trying to get answers because I think the fans want the answers. So that's very, very frustrating when it happens. You know, yeah. as I said, the Malcolm but Butler, you know, f all these years later, you still don't know why Malcolm Butler doesn't play in the Super Bowl. Like that's extremely frustrating. I think still eats at a lot of people. Yeah, and that's exactly what I, I thought. I, of I am one hundred percent. I'm not. I am one hundred percent calling myself stupid. Most journalists, compared to the people, they are asking questions. They we we are not on their level, but we're basically saying, can you explain it to us? Sometimes, you know. And with Bill, it's. Hey, fall at the altar of Bill. We know you're the almighty. And you're... there's not a single person employed at, but on a team in any capacity as a coach or a whatever who doesn't know worlds more about football than every person in that locker room asking questions. But you're asking them why. Why are you doing these things? Explain it to us. It doesn't seem to make logical sense sometimes and still not getting answers over the, over the, uh, the basic stuff, which gets which gets frustrating. Yeah, it does. I mean, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I don't even have much to add. It's just like one example of it the other way was like I asked Mac uh, about the Jalen Rager back shoulder where Emmanuel Forbes almost picked him off. And he was super candid and basically was like, yeah, we tried to pick on him and it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even understand that was what he meant. At first, I thought Ray, I thought he just meant he was trying to throw to Rager. I was like, well, that didn't work very well. Yeah. And then I, and then somebody was like, dude, no, he was talking about Forrest. I'm like, oh, damn, that was kind of juicy. I had a scoop and I didn't even know. Amateur, I'm learning. But yeah, yeah. Different, different wavelengths with coaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, but that's Bill and it's always been Bill. It really more comes down to, again, nobody gives a crap about the media. Nobody gives a crap about, you know, this is Jack Nicholson. I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Like, he doesn't care what we think we're entitled to in terms of answers. I do think the fans want some answers. And the, really the fans want answers, not about like what's happening on the field. It's why did you ruin the Patriots? Like what's going, like that's what people want to know is why is this happening here? Like, you you would like to feel that the person responsible for all of it recognizes I have put a bad team on the field. I have assembled a poor team, a team bereft of any real talent who and, and, and who doesn't do what we want them to do or we're not doing a good enough job getting them to do what we want them to do. But there's not enough acknowledgement there. And I think that's where people that's where the vultures really start circling here. Um, 
because it's all fine and good when you've got Bill can be funny and crap all over a reporter when they're when they're you know 14 and two and headed to another Super Bowl. It's not as cool when the entire fan base is like, no man, I really want to know this. Like what's going on right now with this team? And also, do you recognize it or do you think everything's okay? Do you think it's fixable? Do you feel as is it as do you view this as dire a situation as we do because we're freaking out man you know and that's kind of where fans are here is i want this team to be good but you're not giving me anything 